Okay, board, we are now going to go to 10.2, which was 10.6, if you're looking at the old agenda. This is now the third reading. This is for Centerville Elementary School for the new zoning plan out in the Gilbert community. Um, we're going to go ahead and get a motion and a second on the floor, and then we'll open it up for discussion. Do I hear a motion to approve the Centerville Elementary School zoning plan as presented? Madam Chair, I move that the board approve the administrative team's Centerville Elementary School zoning proposal as presented at third reading. Okay, thank you, Mr. Oswald. Do I have a second? Okay, thank you, Ms. Green. Okay, I'm going to now turn it over to Mr. Salters, and then we'll open it up for questions and comments following his comments. Thank you, Mr. Salters. <clears throat> thank you, Madam Chair and members of the board. Uh, tonight, uh, it's my pleasure to present to you third reading of the Centerville uh, Elementary School attendance lines. Um, as you recall, this uh, school will open in August of 2020 as our, our current schedule. Um, and so we are trying to establish attendance lines to, to make that happen. Uh, Centerville will become a K-5 uh, school as well as uh, the current Gilbert primary site location will uh, become Gilbert Elementary um, and also um, have K-5. Actually, it'll have uh, 3K uh, through five, grade 5 and um, Centerville will have 4K through grade 5. So as you recall, uh, rezoning is a pretty common practice in this district and when we do this we look at um, a number of considerations uh, as we have listed here uh, we've we've gone over these in the past but using facilities efficiently is is a primary goal um, and minimizing uh, obviously division of subdivision um, and other things that you see listed here um, and we really at, at, try to use natural boundaries and roadways when we when we can so that the lines make sense and are easily uh, discussed um, with the community and recognized. So, um, as I mentioned, that Centerville will be opening um, in August. This is a prototype, so this will be the fourth uh, version of this plan that we we've built um, with Rocky Creek, Medical Inn, and Deerfield being the other ones. So that's a rendering, and it's actually uh, starting to look like that. If you've ridden by um, these these front um, canopies are up, and some of the brick is starting to go up on the exterior of the building. So that's that's pretty exciting to watch. Um, <clears throat> we had a number of uh, feedback sessions in the community. I uh, wanted each of our, our schools affected. And then we also had online uh, feedback that was uh, solicited. Um, we actually had 40 written comments um, and then 38 online feedback forms filled out. So pretty good balance of both, uh, really give a shout out to our communications department uh, for, for managing that process and collecting that information. Really appreciate that. There were three themes uh, that came up in that, in that feedback. Um, we've gone back through and looked at all, all the feedback and really since the last board meeting um, after second reading to now, we only had a couple of um, pieces of feedback that came in um, and, and they fit generally in these, these categories that we have here of travel concerns, uh, daycare concerns, and immersion program considerations. So um, just to take a look at, at the travel concerns, um, obviously we, we have Centerville that's going to be up here in the northern part of the community. Right now, of course, this is all Gilbert Primary School attendance area and all Gilbert Elementary attendance area. So um, with Centerville being built here, uh, there's a need to, to divide the, the attendance area. Gilbert Elementary School resides right here. And I've highlighted some of the travel distances for you with 8.8 .8 miles being the furthest away to Centerville in the lower portion and 9.7 in the upper portion. And that actually decreases the travel distance for those folks. And then four miles over here. Um, Gilbert Elementary School, we still have, these are existing travel distances because they're already going to this location at some point, 10.6 miles and then 12.5 from the, the lower portion here. Um, and so we recognize that there are some, some students, um, generally speaking in, um, lost my point, in this area right in here uh, that, that may have to travel near, um, you know, the current uh, Gilbert Primary, future Gilbert Elementary School site. And so the administration is recommending that we approve uh, 10 school choice slots, uh, assuming the lines basically stay where we are recommending. Um, 10 school choice slots available at, at each school location uh, to help 
uh, with with these whoops I'm sorry with these um, folks in this area that may want to attend uh, Gilbert Elementary School um, we, we've gotten some feedback from from people in this area uh, that, that has been mixed I mean many people are pleased with the lines and want to go to Centerville uh, which is where they're zoned and we've had a few folks who were concerned about driving past um, you know the the current uh, site uh, to get to Centerville, if they you know they have a route that they may choose to go that way, and so we feel like these ten choice slots will uh, give folks uh, that are interested in staying an option. And actually, if I could add to that just a minute, uh, part of what we were discussing here that those ten choice slots would be reserved for people in the Gilbert attendance zone, as opposed to opening up ten choice slots from across the district because it's a, a special rezoning opportunity. We'd like to reserve those ten slots just for the Gilbert folks and. Uh, I think that's something, I don't know we've ever done that before, but uh, that was part of our conversation moving forward is that it, there would just be 10 choice slots for this area. I like that. Yeah, and that's, that's a really good point, Dr. Little. We, we have not done that historically when we've had school choice. It's been open to anybody in the district, but we feel like uh, these slots would be des designated for folks in the Gilbert attendance area. So um, we feel like that, that helps alleviate some of the travel concerns uh, that we have. And so moving on to some daycare concerns, uh, some of the, the bigger uh, challenges that we had were there are two daycare centers that are located on uh, Broad Street right here uh, that, that is a portion of the attendance boundary. And they're actually on the southern portion, if you will, uh, of Broad Street. And so they're in uh, the Gilbert Elementary zone. Um, and so there was some concern about uh, students attending Centerville and being able to still uh, have transportation to those um, those daycares and we've actually worked that out um, if the line stays where it is uh, we will be able to run a bus down Broad Street and uh, you know let those kids off and and ha uh, you know make that a daycare stop so that they can attend uh, those two daycares so we feel like um, that met the needs of, of many of the, the folks that were um, having challenges with with daycare. There are um, some other daycares available in the Centerville zone, and also I would point out that um, Centerville will have an after-school program there locally as well uh, as the intention, I think, um, with Mr. Branham. So, um, so there are a number of options, but this obviously opens up two options that folks are already using. We feel like that, that'll help with that situation. And then uh, the immersion program, uh, there was uh, a good bit of discussion about immersion um, and a, a number of considerations that we've, we've looked at. Um, of course, there's been conversation about having uh, the immersion program located all at one school. Um, and it, if it was located all at Gilbert um, Elementary School, the current Gilbert Primary School site, um, basically, we would ha have that school open over capacity uh, because of the volume of students that would would be there. Um, if you put it all at um, Centerville Elementary School, uh, the, the school could handle it from a capacity standpoint. However, transportation um, is, is a big problem. Uh, in the afternoon, there's some 67 students in the immersion program that ride the bus um, home, and so and that divides out pretty equally, so you would be cutting off a number of students. And that's just third, fourth, and fifth grade. And that's grade. just third, fourth, and fifth grade. Yes, sir, good point. And you, you'd become, um, I'm sorry, that's just third and fourth grade, Dr. Little. Um, you, would, you would be cutting off a number of students uh, for participation in that, um, in that program, uh, potentially because of the transportation issues. So the recommendation, um, you know, has come out to to uh, house a Spanish immersion program at both locations. Um, another consideration that was looked into was grandfathering certain grade levels um, so that you might have uh, third, fourth, and fifth grade all attend Centerville, as an example, and have K-1 and 2 at, at both, ele you know, both elementary schools. Um, you know that becomes problematic when you start incorporating siblings into the conversation uh, because uh, you know and then and then you limit travel um, you know bus pickup and so forth so uh, it, it really starts to break down when you start looking at all the variables that are associated with with that um, some other recommendations were to house it all in one location and provide shuttles or or use shuttles to accomplish the grandfathering um, between schools the idea of shuttles, um, 
you know, se seems like it's a really good idea until you start really actually trying to implement it. Um, shuttle, you know, shuttle service, we have to pick up our students and get them to school uh, at first, and then you would have to ride a shuttle uh, over, but, you know, let's just say you got them to Gilbert Elementary and then you had to ride a shuttle to, to Centerville. You're potentially looking at a 10 to 15 minute, um, you know, shuttle ride. Um, and then by the time you get that child into a classroom settled and ready to learn, it could be as much as 20 to 30 minutes. And then you flip that around in the afternoon and do the same thing. Um, it, it really becomes problematic because they've got to get back to the, the other elementary school so they can catch their, you know, uh, homebound bus. Um, so you could potentially lose 45 minutes to an hour of instruction every day uh, by doing the shuttle service. Um, and, you know, we feel like that's a really uh, a big loss for our students. And so um, what our, our, our recommendation is uh, to provide full immersion programs, again, at, at both locations. Uh, this will result in smaller class sizes, um, you know, in the upper grade levels for a few years. Um, but we feel like that's uh, actually a good thing uh, when you have uh, lower class sizes and more direct contact with teachers. Um, the other key benefit here is that transportation is provided for all students. Um, and so uh, by having it at both locations, they just get on their normal school bus and, and ride. Um, and so that that's, becomes a very convenient thing and it doesn't limit anyone from having access to the immersion program in these areas. Um, we have uh, stated here that emerging students who live outside of the Gilbert attendance area, they're currently enrolled in the program, uh, will work with them and, and, and place them, you know, where the enrollment best, best fits by grade level um, in, in the district. So um, that's, uh, that's kind of our uh, take with the immersion. And Dr. Will, you yeah, want if to you don't, add Yes, that? I'll jump in. I really think the, the full immersion programs at both Gilbert and Centerville serve as a win-win for uh, both groups uh, because of the significant afternoon ridership. Uh, you know, in the past what has happened is when, we've, uh, when we have rezoned and you move from, uh, you know, whatever it was when we did Meadow Glen and Meadow, uh, Meadow Glen Elementary and Midway Elementary and New Providence, we did that rezoning. Um, you know, what could happen there is the people are still relatively within the geography of the other school and so uh, this board has historically not de done transportation out of zone to attend an immersion program because the because it's relatively close by certainly here in a uh, in the Gilbert situation where it represents one-third of our entire school district uh, that certainly could be much more problematic and so um, I look at that as a as it really a win-win it's a smaller class size for a couple of years certainly but, uh, but overall, none of those parents will have to choose between transportation or other things and attending the program. They have that opportunity to do so. Um, and, I, I think, and, and I think they're both will eventually be, uh, you're planning a seat at both programs uh, that will continue to flourish for years to come. Okay. Um, so looking at our projected enrollments, um, right now with our numbers, uh, Centerville would open at 705 students um, approximately, and this is, you know, grades K-4 through grade 5, um, and then Gilbert Elementary would be approximately 816 students, K-3 through grade 5. You know, and I'll just tell you that um, when we did Beachwood, I think we showed a number of, uh, you know, approximately 900 students enrolled at Beachwood, and I think on the 45th day there were 900 students enrolled at Beachwood. Um, and I'll, I'll be the first to tell you that while um, – you know, we're, we're pretty good at this stuff because we've done it a long time. We're really not that good. Um, but it's a lot easier to project middle school enrollment because most, if not all, in some cases of the students are already in your system. And so you can just see the cohorts go up and you have a growth factor and that's it. Elementary schools are a little bit different uh, because you don't know how many kindergarten students are actually out there and how many kindergarten students are going to show up to enroll. Um, and so it's a little bit of a a different animal with with elementary but we we anticipate those numbers being very close uh to start with in in these two attendance areas <clears throat> so um can you go back and say what your goal was for uh gilbert elementary 
uh, as far as the capacity. Yeah, wh where you wouldn't want, where's the... Yeah, so, uh, you know, we're really, <clears throat> that's a good point, Gilbert Elementary School, when you start getting into the 870 range uh, or so, you really start to run out of space. Um, and I'll tell you that <clears throat> uh, Mr. Moody would probably tell you they're, they're comfortable here, um, uh, tightly comfortable. Uh, and as you get start adding at more and more students, um, you're going to get into a situation where they have people, you know, in, in nooks and crannies that, you know, we really would rather not use for, for students. Um, and certainly we don't want to get into a situation where we have to use portable classrooms um, in, in Gilbert Elementary School. That would kind of defeat the purpose. And so that's why we've kind of created that buffer. Um, <clears throat> we do anticipate some growth. Um, while I've got this slide up, I can I can show you there's a good bit of growth occurring up here on Highway Highway um, 378. There's a good bit of growth right down from the school. There's a neighborhood going in right here. Um, this area right in here, um, MacArthur Road, all in that area. There's some stuff going on there. With uh, I'm sorry, MacArthur down in here, um, Gilbert Elementary School's area, and Deerfield sits right here. So a good bit of growth in, in this area of of Gilbert. And so we have some buffer built in. And additionally, if you'll recall, uh, we will be repurposing uh, the current Gilbert Elementary School site as a 4K center um, in the near future. And that will allow for the 4K and 3K programs that are housed at both of these locations, taking up classrooms to be relocated. And that gives them additional capacity in the future. So we, we're timing that out so that those, those classrooms open and, and are ready for uh, the future growth that we anticipate in both areas. So. Um, so looking at the line specifically, um, we, we are not recommending any changes to the lines from second to third reading. Um, I've got the, you know, the lines highlighted here, but basically, you know, this area f follows Wire Road. We come into, um, into the town area. This is obviously Louie, and then we kind of take a little jog here, and then this is, uh, follows Broad Street. And again, this is where the daycares are that we would be able to serve if the line remains the same. Comes down to Green Hills Drive, gets on to Kraut Pond, um, and then this is kind of uh, the follow-up to that. Uh, the connecting point would be up here, so Kraut Pond continues on down. Um, you grab AC Balk Knight and Camp Branch and then finish up off, off here on Two Notch. Um, just for your orientation, this is Lexington 3, um, and on the previous slide, this little sliver up here um, is uh, a Deerfield. So, um, sorry, going the wrong way. Um, so we're not recommending any, any changes from second reading to third reading to the lines. Um, and just to recap briefly, you know, our immersion programs, we said, would be offered at both locations. Three and four-year-old offering would be at Gilbert Elementary, 4K at Centerville. Um, currently no grandfathering planned at this time because all rising fifth graders would actually change physical school locations. Um, and then three and four-year-old programs will move to the new Gilbert attendance area, early childhood center in the future, as I, as I mentioned that'll create some capacity for us. Um, I have these meetings up here just as a recap. Um, you, you spent a lot of time looking at these lines and, and working through this process, going all the way back to January where, when we had first reading, and then we had our community input meetings in February with second reading, and, and obviously we're here today uh, with third reading. So um, with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have uh, regarding the lines. Mr. Sauls, what, what is the uh, target date for the 4K facility to open? Do we have a date? So out? we're looking basically, um, and, and Dr. Little, you may have, have some other ideas, but we're looking at, at this coming year being kind of a planning year. Um, and so, so this, the center, we would, we would hope to open two years from now. Um, and that's, you know, that's our goal. That'd be a relief valve for the... Yes, sir. Other two schools. Yes, sir. Did you want to add to that, Dr. Little? Or? No, I, that's okay. what I was okay. going to say. We, yeah. we, uh, we had to slow that down just a little bit as we were really trying to make sure we grabbed a, uh, grabbed a model for that program. We wanted to make that make sure that was an excellent model. And, and of course, the idea with putting a children's museum and some other ideas that we wanted to put together, uh, felt like we needed to be able to measure twice and cut once. Miss Hill, just to clarify, um, on the response from the community, have you had additional response since you last provided that um, the last time? Okay, great. Okay, and 
I did ask uh, Mr. Uh, Branham and Mr. Moody to get that out to the community. So, um, and I did speak with Mr. Moody, and he said it, it, adding the 10 slots at each school, um, that seemed to answer the issues that the parents that he had spoken with, that answered the issues they had, and he was very appreciative that you did that. Okay. Any other questions, Dr. Guyton? Yeah, so the last time I, I had kind of asked about the, the immersion, um, and it, it seemed like the majority of the feedback we were getting was um, trying to keep those, those classes together, if you will. Um, and um, as I kind of looked at it some more, and of course as you guys looked into it, th that seems to be less of a line issue um, because, I mean, if you got somebody up at the top of Shore Road and somebody down at Austin, I mean, there's no good line you could draw to keep those classes together if you will. Correct. So right. so I think that issue may be less of a lines issue and more towards that programmatic side. So, you know, obviously I think if, if there were an unintended consequence to come out of that by disruption of those, I, I'm assuming we could address that from a from the programmatic side as opposed to the physical line side. Would that be would that be a fair statement, I guess? I think I, I need you to be a little more specific. I, I don't know what you mean that we can address it from a programmatic side. Just meaning that if if it became so disruptive by the by breaking up the classes, if you will, I mean, I, I think we've done all we can do essentially by providing immersion at both schools. Um, but it's you know, if the desire is to keep, if the desire would be to keep the classes together, I think the only potential thing that could come into play there would be a special consideration for attendance. But that would involve transportation provided by the parent. That's obviously not something we could provide. Correct. Okay. And, and if, if I could just point out, Dr. Guyton, that um, the immersion classes are kind of shuffled every year. So I don't necessarily follow, and Dr. Little, you may speak to this more since your daughter's in, involved, but I don't, I don't go, you know, from second grade to third grade with the exact same, you know, 20, 25 students in my class. They, they get shuffled. Um, within that class, I mean, sure. within those couple classes every year. So, um, you know, this is a kind of a normal process that would occur in gotcha. that process. Gotcha. And as it's part temporary. Of the That's right. the other thing. It's temporary. You know, um, this is going to be a short-lived problem. Um, and I think that's the, uh, again, not that it's not an issue, and I certainly can understand where the parents are coming from, uh, but it's a short-lived issue. Right. Um, so the, the benefit, you know, sometimes when you when you deal with these situations, I think what we try to do is, is here's the here's the best we can do. I'm having a hard time seeing you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, that computer screen is kind of in the way. But um, you know, sometimes it's about the best. You know, you know, so here's an issue. So we can't really resolve it this way. But here's a way we can mitigate it. Right. Um, and I think you'll see that in a number of the solutions that you have here. You know, the, the ten choice slots just for the Gilbert folks. Uh, I think that helps mitigate those folks that are really having a problem with that. Uh, we can really try to minimize that. And I think likewise with, um, with the immersion program, uh, because so many of them deal with different versions of transportation, it really allows them to take advantage of, 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 uh, of the immersion program and not have to choose about whether or not, you know, we can reorganize our entire life to make sure somebody goes and picks up the child from school after school to go to daycare or wherever they can go. So they have that opportunity to do so. So yes, they're, they'll be split up from their friends for temporarily because they're all going to Gilbert Middle School. But on the flip side is they get smaller class sizes right. and everybody gets an opportunity to continue in the program. And, and that's, that's, a, that's a pretty good thing, I think, in terms of mitigation. Well, and most importantly, the, the, the academics are preserved. Right. And so by, by maintaining the immersion at both sites, we, you know, you've maintained the commitment to the community about the academics of immersion, which is the best possible thing, I think, that you Absolutely. can do. Thank you. Any other questions or comments, board? I have a couple of questions and a couple of comments. Um, a couple of things I noticed as I went back through here, some of these questions had not been answered. Um, one of those being an employee who works at another location whose kids attend Gilbert. Um, do employees not have school choice? They have employee choice. Okay, okay. So I guess y'all take care of that. She'll still mm -hmm. be able to, okay. Um, how is the district going to staff K through five Spanish immersion at both schools when we've had issues in the past staffing just one of these? Um, 
I know on here it says the teacher came around Thanksgiving, but another one told me that the teacher didn't actually come, and, and this may be a different class as well, until January. So do we know if we have enough Spanish immersion teachers to staff both locations? According to HR, we do. According to HR, we have plenty. Or we will. I mean, I, they've, I don't know that they've been hired at the moment, but we will have them by next year. Okay. I think we approved some tonight. We approved two tonight. Um, but I don't think those were both Spanish. I think one of them may have been a different language. So they have not been hired yet, is what you're saying? Well, we haven't approved this plan yet either. So that's after this, we'll start yeah, we're doing that stuff too. Okay. Um, then another lady made a comment about transportation. Um, buses, you haven't fixed the issues this year. Our children lose instruction. Um, this is very important. I get notifications all the time that buses are running late. And I know in the mornings, buses arrive to schools late. Um, that's just something we need to look at in general. I just feel like if people are gonna take the time to fill out these forms, I'd at least like to try to answer their questions. Um, one mentioned Spanish immersion at Rocky Creek. So I understand some of those parents, those kids are going to Gilbert from Rocky Creek. Do we have any plans to expand the immersion program to Rocky Creek? We do not. They already have a coding uh, computer science immersion program there. Okay. Just, I guess, the lines in general. Some people are upset that they live right there, almost within walking distance of the school, and they still have to drive to Centerville, um, which leads to one of these questions. With Gilbert growing rapidly, why doesn't Pillion absorb some of the area south of I-20 instead of those people driving to Gilbert? We have you know, similar issues in Gilbert with capacity. Uh, if we're adding classrooms to Forts Pond Elementary School, which would be the uh, attendance area that that school touches. And so it, it would not make sense to send students to Forts Pond and overload Forts Pond when we have capacity at Gilbert Elementary School, at least at this point. And that's something that may be looked at, you know, in the future. More than likely, down the road, there'll be an elementary school that sits between Forts Pond and Gilbert Elementary School. What you know, about, to, to serve that area. Um, what about Pillion Elementary? Are they near capacity as well? They're they're in a similar situation, but again, they're further away. So you would actually right. drive if you're if you're looking at the geography, you would drive past Forts Pond Elementary School to get to Pillion Elementary School. So you'd be sending students that are you know currently in the Gilbert zone at the bottom of that zone down past Forts Pond and get them to Pillion Elementary School. So that that doesn't really uh, make a lot of sense either. They'd be going through one attendance area to get to another one. Right. Kind of like we're doing in Gilbert, driving past Gilbert Elementary. To no, that this is, it would not be the same thing. But there's still like those, you would have to pass one to get to the other, which is basically what most it, of these people I mean, are we're, when I say we're passing, you would, you would actually be driving 10 miles to get to Forts Pond and then driving another whatever mile, two miles to get to, to, um, uh, Peeling Elementary School. In this situation, when I when you're when you're talking about driving, you're you're literally driving. If if you're in here, well, let me go back to, to the one that has the um, the distances. The, the furthest point down here is eight and a half miles, and there there are routes to go here and then over here. So you can choose to go this way if, if you want to, and that and that may be a more convenient route depending on what you're doing. Um, and, but but in in situations like this, you would be driving, and I can't even do it because of the map it isn't doesn't have it demonstrated. But you'd be driving way down here, off the screen, and then sliding over to another attendance area. Um, and so it's it's a much different commute than what you're talking about here. Right. I'm just saying, like what the people are complaining about is kind of. The I, same and thing. I think that was one comment. Yeah. Right. Um, Okay, why are you planning to make Centerville so different from the other Gilbert schools? Why not keep the red and black colors and the Indian theme? Each school has their own identity and that's that's up to the, the, the school community there. And uh, you know, the board, and, and we did a lot of research and the board named the, the, the school Centerville Elementary School because that's the Centerville history and legacy of that community. There was a school there um, and so each school in the district has their own identity. Okay, and and sure eventually, these, yeah. and I would also add to that, eventually, um, if you look, you know, off this map 
to to the right here, you've got all of these different elementary schools, and and as you can see, uh, you know, fast forward 20, 25 years, this is going to look the same way, and so you're going to end up probably, you know, at some point down the road having another middle school, at some point down the road having another high school, and so when you start having schools tied to um, those, that same color and feel, you end up in situations, you know, like Lexington Elementary School was for a while, where they're the, you know, they're tied to the Lexington High School colors, but but some of their students end up at River Bluff. Uh, and so as, as you continue to grow, you can't really maintain that. That's why we encourage each school to have their own identity. Okay. So that's made at the school level, I guess. Um, I mean, just a couple of comments. I would really have liked this email this teacher sent us where she explained how we could save six FTEs and four FTEs. And I understand that y'all said transportation and shuttling is an issue. Um, but I would like to see something like she has broken down, broken down from administration and presented to us and saying, this is why it won't work. This is how many students we have on the bus. This is how many students would be car riders. Um, you know, and then go through the different options of staggered start times and just give us things to look at so we could decide, you know, okay, we can take part of this here and part of that there. Um, but that's just some comments going forward. Um, and as I mentioned at the last meeting, I would like, before we do any kind of rezoning, to have some kind of committee put together that's made up of teachers, bus drivers, parents, before it actually comes to the board for first reading, because that would work out a lot of the kinks before it ever got to us. Any other questions or comments? Board? What? Mr. I, Oswald? I'd like to say something about transportation. <clears throat> Since I was a bus driver back in 1969, 70, and I had the longest bus route in the district, which was in Gilbert. But I, I think by dividing that attendance area up, it's going to probably, correct me if I'm wrong, solve some of the bus scheduling issues and bus times the routes won't be as long they'll be cut in half so probably we won't have a lot of those issues to have to deal with well you certainly bring up a good point mr oswald i mean some of the routes will will be cut down considerably and so that will help um you know on those travel times and distances for students on the bus um, well, i think a lot of folks don't understand it <clears throat> is the largest attendance area in the district i mean there's right. seven it's 17 miles long Right. So that, that presented, always presented a transportation problem and scheduling. So just, just wanted to say that. Thank you. Did you bus students to the old Centerville? I'm sorry? Wasn't there an old Centerville <laughs> Elementary? Did you, <laughs> you drop it? You that, 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 that would have been a horse and carriage. <laughs> you, you can throw a shoe at him, Ms., Mr. Oswald. <laughs> Anybody else with questions or comments, board? Okay. We will go back. Let's go back to our motion. We have a motion from Mr. Oswald to approve the Centerville Elementary School zoning plan as presented, and um, we have a second from Ms. Green. And I do want to make one comment. I want to thank Mr. Salters and his team and Dr. Little. I also want to thank Mr. Moody and Mr. Branham. There is a lot that goes into doing this, and people don't realize it's you guys have really done some heavy lifting, so thank you. So we now have a motion and a second. All in favor of the zoning plan as presented for Centerville Elementary School, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'm opposed. Okay. So we have, let's see, three, four, five. We have five in favor and one opposed. And the motion carries. <laughs> 